All right. Now then. <laughs> okay, so in the last session, uh, we came across an issue uh, in testing uh, the salt back end. Uh, and the basic conclusion was that in here, uh, in the uh, salt back ends, the problem was if we introduce the salt test, uh, then it would necessitate uh, in here um, okay uh, we install the salt minion but the problem then is that that salt minion is disabled down here so we have to enable the salt minion service uh, the salt mini would have to be configured uh, and it would have to be configured to use uh, either we'd either we'd either have to install the salt master on the machine during the testing because that's the context in which the pi test is run or we would have to create a special case which would fire up uh, another docker instance with the salt master in it and then that would become a proxy and would run pytest in there i mean that's doable uh, 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 it's doable fairly easily when i think now i'm thinking about well i say fairly easily okay here's the thing um if i Okay, so here's the thing. What you've got is we've got two elements. Okay, we've got uh, PyTest running. Okay, and that needs access to uh, the salt client. Uh, so that when you do a salt test, uh, the salt client is called or invoked and that then communicates with the relevant uh, docker machine uh, or docker container in this case it's debian uh, was it debian buster All right so in order to get that to work debian buster would have to be running the minion uh, the minion ID would have to be a known quantity, or we could set it to be Debian Buster. Okay, we would also have to make sure that salt resolved to be whatever the IP address of the host was. So, in order to do that, invoking this Docker image, we would pass in, let's call it the host IP address as a variable. Okay, so salt would have to resolve to host IP, uh, which would allow this minion, assuming that the firewall on this container allowed it, uh, it would allow the minion to resolve back to the salt client and the master that was running on on this host, which in my case would be my Mac. Now the problem with that is if you've already got a master running on there. Uh, you're going to get all sorts of conflicts. So what you could do is we could have another Docker image, okay, which runs, which we will call the Salt Master, okay, and this just runs the Salt Master. So now these two machines need to talk to each other. So instead of resolving to the host IP, it resolved to the IP of this Salt Master. This Salt Master was on the master and we would then instead of running pytest directly we could run pytest inside that docker now that does have some advantages uh, first of all everything can be set up inside this docker to run tox so the pytest uh, and all about the, the whole context could be set up in a separate docker and instead of running tox directly you could run it via uh, that docker 
and the entire i mean the entire test directory could be mounted as a volume in inside this docker so it's not really that much of an overhead it just it's just providing context uh, it might also be possible to have it so that you could run tox uh, as it normally is and have certain tests excluded uh, specifically those tests uh, that involved anything that wasn't in the context of yeah, any, anything not in this special docker context yeah um, so when you run pi test normally it would just run standard docker tests but when you wanted to do a full set what you do is you'd invoke this docker image to run pi test uh, which would then invoke the other docker images and just generally set everything up um, and could do any additional tests that required special stuff like the salt master so that's doable uh, and if i were inclined to that's the way I would probably do this. But that's quite a significant change. And I'm not sure it's really worthwhile. Uh, at the moment. Because I've got lots of other things I want to do. So what I'm going to do instead is ignore the problem. <laughs> um, so, so uh, let's just go back to here and do uh, git status. And uh, what we want to do is put the test. I think it's the, the test backends. Uh, Uh, yeah, I'm going to take all of those salt tests out of there for now. They can go back, uh, kind of, uh, although we'd probably have to do it in a slightly different way, because uh, we want we want the list of back-end tests to be sensitive to the context it was running in. So if it was running on a host which didn't have, for example, the salt master running, then we would well, no, that, even that's not sensitive enough it would have to be if it wasn't running in the particular docker instance uh, we would not want to add salt into them and we would only want to add all of these in uh, if we were running in an, in an appropriate context okay so what we can do is we can do uh, Get check out and it's test test back in by okay and that puts us back where we were okay so we've now got our system back what we now want to do is actually make the change uh, now we're going to have to do this without testing it uh, so let's do um, uh, testing for it and uh, it was in back end wasn't it uh, so why socks okay and the thing we want to do is now now uh, as discussed in the last thing there are two ways of doing this uh, the first way and the, the way I was going to do it is I was just going to add the keyword arguments but looking at the way the test runs work uh, if we ever did change everything uh, to genuinely run uh, it would need a wholesale change in the testing because the way the tests are written at the moment uh, it assumes oops, that standard out byte 
is going to be available and it's not okay because this uh, this out standard out here is a string that's what's causing the problem in the first place uh, it looks to me like the keyword arguments thing was sort of bolted on after the fact to solve another problem in fact we can probably see that if we go back to the uh, where is it uh, we're testing for uh, yeah uh, but we want to go back to uh, just in for a test no not test uh, if we go to back end we just look at the history of this uh, uh, no 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 it's the base I want to look at. I want to see when the when that uh, that hack was added in. There you go. I'm guessing that that was it. Uh, There we go. Mm. Now, Ansible may return bytes as Unicode objects. Uh, there you go. So we've added. Uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Look, uh, that line was already in there. Um, oh, that's answerable anyway. Base. There we go. Uh, so that. Where are we? Oh, that's interesting. Just change the order. The standard out none was still was already in there, so that's not what caused the change. Uh, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum. There we go. There we go. So this is the change where it was added in this sort of hack. Uh, so the justification for that was uh, Ansible backend and module. So it was actually the Ansible backend that caused this introduction of this sort of workaround. Interesting. That strikes me as a bit of a hack. Uh, what and that gets the output. There we go. And it encodes it.
But this is kind of what we want to do, isn't it? How very odd. So he does both things. Why? That's very strange, isn't it? It seems like a bit of a... I mean, it keeps it in line with the testing, but he's also added on the two extra bits to sort of short-circuit it. Mm. Uh, my guess is that encode returns a byte encoded. Yeah, UTF-8 is the default anyway. Uh, Yeah, so it's, it's a byte to it, uh, uh, it's a byte rather than, hmm. So, it looks like we just do the same thing. So in here, when we construct this object here, uh, we just want to emulate what he's done uh, for the Ansible backend. And so when we create the command result, uh, right. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, so here, okay, we're effectively calling uh, the result in base, but he ignores it when he runs over here, and he constructs the command result directly. It's a little bit of a mess, isn't it? Uh, oops. So if we do uh, right, so this is the result that we're invoking. And the result is essentially just a new command result. Okay. And the command result is defined at the top here. Wow. Um, so, so command result, I mean the advantage of calling result rather than invoking command result directly is that we get this debug logging, which is a good thing. Uh, and in fact, I mean, I don't see the advantage. Uh, I mean, result literally is just adding the logging on. Uh, So 
So I think that what we need to do to make this meet the results, instead of doing this, we do uh, uh, we do the encode. Uh, UTF-8 and oops uh, uh, why does that say encode UTF-9 Okay. Okay. Then Uh, which basically does the same thing as he's done for Does the trick, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the testing is not going to show any difference because we're not using that back end. Uh, however, we will run it in order to run the other bits and bobs. Uh, in the meantime, over here, uh, 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 this is this is the a actual real deal. Uh, so we should have. Uh, we should have test infra. Uh, right, and our problem here was that the salt back end was misbehaving. Uh, uh, and we, the change we made was slightly different because all we did was add those two, which is fine, but we also want to add this uh, I 
guess. Uh, so that now Okay. Uh, and the test is failing for legitimate reasons, isn't it? Uh, assert host, I guess, NF tables. Isn't, yeah, we expect one of them to fail. Uh, yeah, server two. Because it doesn't have NF tables installed. So our, uh, the change you make works uh, in, in that context. Uh, and we haven't broken anything over here so far, uh, which is the only reason to run the tests at the moment. Right, so we can, we can now, we've now got three changes to submit, one of which has already got a change request. Uh, which is the one we've just done. Uh, so that change seems to work, uh, at least on our existing system. Um, what we haven't done is we haven't implemented the salt backend testing, which would be a nice to have. Uh, you know, to do to do proper backend tests, um, but like I say, that requires us to be able to spawn out in a context-sensitive way. Uh, so we would need to build a Docker image for testing, and then during the testing. When we encountered tests for something that required a specialized backend, uh, i.e. salt, then two things. First of all, the Debian image would have to start the minion properly and would kind of have to connect to the master. Uh, and the PI tests would then have to use that master container to run uh, any tests aimed at that back end. Well, it's an interesting exercise. Do I do I want to spend a lot of time doing that though? Uh, what we'd have to do uh, what we'd have to do is uh, we would have to change the testing so we would have to change the test of backends such that uh, we would have to say if we found salt uh, as the host Uh, so would we need to make that uh, would we have to make that part of the host fixture so that Right, so in here, okay, it works out the thing we need to communicate with as part of the host fixture uh, in here. 
but in addition to that we would have to change it so that PyTest effectively ran those tests inside a container with the relevant client installed on it, namely uh, a salt client running on the master. So All right, so this is doing the building of the image. So building the image is neither here nor there. We can certainly do that. Uh, that's easy enough. The question is, how can we make a Pi test which has already started? So it would have to run the command. Uh, uh, I actually do two things, doesn't it? Have to, it has to run the master, uh, and then in here, hmm. we'd have to figure out some way for the host. to uh, take the current test and run that on a different host. Oh, no. oh, mm -hmm. Ugh. Ugh. oh it's kind of cool, but it's much easier to just create a container to run PyTest so that when PyTest is invoked on the host, instead of it being invoked on the host, it's invoked in the container on the host. And the problems all go away, because you just make that container contain whatever you need. Uh, but that would mean, instead of invoking Tox directly, or PyTest, or any of the testing directly, it would all have to be done indirectly. So the simplest way to do that would be to have a you know, run test command that would actually uh, run a container Now, the next question is uh, uh, now a container should be able to build other images, so that's not a problem, and it should even be able to run other containers. As long as it's got the rights to access Docker. So that shouldn't be a problem. So setting up a proxy container is feasible, I guess. Uh, right, okay, I'm, I'm kind of muttering away to myself. So what I'm saying is that instead of doing tox and running it in this context, what happens is you do a run test, for example. I mean, you could, you could alias tox and stuff. But what that does is it does a docker run of tox okay inside this image then this image builds and runs the, the tests exactly as it does now but all of the context with you know pytest tox uh, check manifest you know, all the other stuff that is needed and salt master would be in here the salt master would have to be configured to auto accept keys uh, 
and then then we could have the salt minion automatically register and I'll set the minion with each trivial I mean that's doable uh, if the test directory is mounted as a volume within uh, uh, so if it did I flip to this I'm not sure now okay so so tox instead of tox we do a run test which is run within the so the run test would have to do two things when it have to build this image if it didn't already exist then it would have to invoke the tox or the pi test or whatever command you wanted in the context of this this would then run exactly the same as it does now so it would build any of these machines it need this debian buster we would enable the salt minion which would connect back to the salt master running in this container uh, so that requires a bit of jiggery pokery to make sure that the IP address of this container is given to that container. Uh, I mean, we could even go further actually because we could have salt on each of the platforms Alpine, blah 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 blah. But uh, they're not testing the back end for anything else other than, yeah, so. Okay, so it's doable. Uh, yeah, and if this, uh, if the if the test directory was mounted as a volume in here, then everything else would come out in the wash. Uh, it would even write the coverage data back to, as long as it's written back to the test directory uh, and it would appear back on the host mm, so that's not doable uh, the first order of business would be to define this image and make sure that we had a properly working salt and added into here all of the things needed, all the prereqs for the running of the Pi test. Hmm. Oh, we've got line too long. Oh, arse. And the trailing white space. And brackets not matching visual indentation. Okay, well, that's my bad. Everything else is okay, though. So let's uh, vice up. Of course, if I. Um, if I copy my vim. Oh, do I just need my VMRC? Mm. If I remember correctly, I also need to have plug installed as well. Mm. However, mm, VMRC is the first. Mm. Oh, I can never remember. Come on. 
it is it may just be easier to install it on uh, yeah, if we just do that on the actual machine with this interesting thing in it. Okay. Okay, so now You see what I'm doing. Mm, right. Dicky. Mm. Okay, so all these snips. Fine. Mm, that's gonna bug me, isn't it? Mm. Buried away in. Uh, da, 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 da.
Okay, so that's the fix basically done. Let's now uh, let's let's get these uh, converted into pull requests. So, uh, like I said, we've got three. Uh, we've got three pull requests. One well, for the change we've just made. And that's the easier of the three. Then we've got to do the uh, change the manifest dot in to hide the warning, well, to hide the error about the fact the build directory is in sdist. Why? Who knows? Uh, then do the pull request for, uh, so we've got, to rate, we've got to rate an issue and do the pull request for that. Then the other one is to get rid of the warnings uh, about the unregistered PyTest mark. And again, that will require raising an issue and a pull request. Uh, so, uh, putting these back, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, we'll be nice and keep them separate. So, uh, we'll go on to uh, the, the original test emperor. Uh, if I remember correctly, there is nothing here about manifest. Uh, and there is nothing here about... Uh, are you getting down? Come on then, you're in the way. Are you getting down or are you staying up? Which is it? You mean a pain, you know that. Don't you? <laughs> ah. Right. Uh, right. Uh, so there's manifest, and what was the other? Um, oh, warnings. Uh, use custom lookup plugins. Uh, Using remove point is more important. Right, none of those look relevant. So uh, we can raise a new issue. Uh, purge. Uh, doc build from this dist uh, 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 doc build uh, should not First check or check money first, can't remember. Uh, 
this grab is pansy. And we're rolling this. Oh, for crying out loud. Uh, okay, so we'll submit that. So raise another issue for what was it? Uh, suppress warnings from high test. Uh, so uh, high test. Registered protest mark. in was to do with uh, the decode problem and was three Missing something here. Mm. Interesting. It's interesting, going way, way back, it looks like they were testing it. So what happened? When I was looking at this the other day, uh, what was it? It was three nine something, wasn't it? Uh, or three eight something. Uh, uh, so the problem was uh, with salt back end, and it was reporting something. Yeah. 
Jeez. Oh yes, I had to go through the pull request, didn't I? Because it wasn't mentioned. Freaking. Ugh. There we go. Now why isn't that found? Deacon is issue when using 398. Bang. Still open. So why didn't it show up? Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. 398. Uh, that's manifest. That's doc. And that's sort. Okay. Uh, right. So uh, let's do three. Let's do three nine eight. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, Uh, okay, let's just give some more thought to this pie test problem. Uh, I don't think it's ever tested the salt back end. Um, what are the back ends that are there? not being tested? And how much aggravation is it to put them all? Uh, so we've got testing for connection backends. So local, fine. Paramico is being tested. Docker is being tested. Podman isn't being tested, I don't think. SSH is. Salt isn't. Ansible is. Cube CTL, I don't think it is open shift, probably not. Um, Win RM, also probably not. Alexi XD, probably not. Although, th those are basically, uh, I mean, Podman uh, to a lesser extent, Cube CTL. And LXC LCD are uh, all more or less equivalent to Docker. Um, sorts the odd man out. Yeah, I mean, there's no good reason for not including salt, other than, as I say, the complexity of setting it all up. Uh, and, hello, why is that changing? Just bear with me a second. Uh, it would appear that all the time that I've been working on this, uh, that's what you should have been seeing. Never mind. Uh, right, yes. <laughs> that's a little unfortunate. You've missed out almost everything in this in this stream because uh, it's a lot of it's been based on working in. Uh, Testing for uh, so yeah. Sorry about that. I think that's completely screwed the screen screen really. Uh, because all you've seen is that. Uh, oh well, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Not like anybody's actually watching live. It will cause a problem if you come across this. All you'll hear is me muttering and uh, not seeing a great deal. Uh, so it was all it was all to do with these issues. Uh, 
Yeah, that's a bit of a drag actually. Never mind. I don't want to film it all again. I know! Well, you're the one who got down. Come on. Come on then. Oh, poor Kenny! What is he? You can't get up today. Come on then. I know! I know! It's about dinner time, isn't it? Right, that's all passing. So now, what we need to do now is put all of this stuff back in. Uh, so, get status. Okay, so we've got all of this, uh, these three files that we've changed. Okay, we don't want to put them back on the master because uh, until they're accepted, no, we don't want it to affect everything. So what we we'll do is uh, we're we're on our own. Yeah, you're not helping, you know. So uh, okay, so we're on our own um, uh, GitHub. But what we'll do is we'll check out a branch and we'll call it issue. So this is five six two. Uh, and yes, I did mean check out. I don't know quite why I decided to stop typing. Right now then. Uh, so what we're interested in here is the manifest. Okay, so we get add dot 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 manifest. Actually, we might as well cd dot 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 dot. There we go. Okay, so we've now got uh, that scheduled, so we'll do a git commit and oh god, bloody no. Uh, right, uh, god, I, I, I hate nano with a passion. Uh, can't do anything with it. Uh, oh god. Yes, little dogs can be a pain in the backside sometimes. You, you, you're getting in the way. Yes, I know you haven't been fed. But that doesn't alter the fact that I need to do this before I get down. Mm -hmm. uh, right, so what do we want to do here? Uh, you have to excuse me, I'm trying to look around a dog sitting in the way. Mm -hmm. You're being a pain. Oi, are you being the pain? You're sitting right in front of the keyboard. Why are you looking like that? Settle down, come on. Settle down. Oh, oh, he's either sitting down or you're going to have to get down. There you go, good boy. Okay. Really good boy. Right. Oh, there. Right. It's all right, you can rest your hand on my arm, but you've just got to stay out of the way. Uh, right, so this is uh, resolve uh, issue number um, resolve issue number uh, five six two uh, doc. I think it'll accept this one. Uh, so all we're doing, uh, I'm assuming, yeah, that is the first line. Uh, so we have with, uh, um, there's, no, there's no reason to put anything else in there, is there? Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Oh, this is why I hate this bloody program. Now, now what? Uh, okay, so it's frozen on me. Right. There we go. Save. Yes. Uh, right. Mm. 
Do I need to also set get editor or something? I can, I can never remember. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just try doing that. Okay, so git status. Oops. Um, git add test slash conf test. Git checkout. So we'll create another branch. And we'll call this one issue. Um, five six three um, and git commit so that's promising right so this one is uh, uh, oh hateful Bastard ulti snips, right, get rid of that. Mm. This is a problem with doing things half baked. Um, um, to slash vim. Uh, vim. Really, Vim text. Uh, don't really need to worry about that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So this is resolve uh, issue. Right. Uh, oh god, I forgot to do all of that as well. Uh, oh, this is the problem. I, I really need to.
Okay, so we should now have the three. It was a dream, mate. Uh, so we should now have the three changes. Uh, there we go. Uh, on three branches. Uh, what we want to do now is make a pull request for each of these. So. Uh, Uh, so, issue three nine eight. Uh, uh, this is actually uh, interesting. Two commits, really. Uh, oh, bugger! That's not right, is it? Uh, what have I got wrong? I've evidently 398, I've obviously mixed in two things. Okay, let's do let's sort these out one at a time. Uh, right, that one is on wishing 516 purge blah 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 from Estes. Uh, so we've done that. Uh, uh, we run flake eight. Everything cool. Uh, I can't see any chance sensing. Messing them out. And it's now throwing me across to. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, that seems a bit redundant because the pull request Yeah, we could have got away without without anything. We could have just done the pull request directly. Mm -hmm. Same goes. Mm -hmm. Same goes for these two actually. Let's do five six three anyway. Uh, why why are both of these appearing on I don't get it. Why is five six three carrying I mean I guess it's true that it contains it indirectly. Mm -hmm. I've obviously screwed the print somewhere. I don't want that one. What? Oh. Oh, 
Right, so 563. Just adding, yeah, I think what it's doing is it's comparing that with what's currently in uh, there. All right, so this is. Um, Understand that at all. <laughs> Don't understand. Oh, oh, you idiot. It's because I've branched, because uh, uh, I create the branch off. Uh, it's because I'm an idiot. I've created the branch off. Yeah, that's what it is. That branch needs to be rebased. Ah, uh, right. Uh, okay, so git status. Right, so uh, your branch is up to date with origin 563. Right, um, well, what I need to do is check out uh, issue 563. Uh, which one is it I've screwed up royally? Uh, 398. Okay. Uh, five six three and three nine eight uh, are both based off of the wrong branch. Uh, so can I uh, can I rebase them? Uh, so if I rebase them onto the head of master uh, Uh, 
Uh, so if I do git rebase master and then do git push uh, 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 now do I have to do something like that ah. uh, in order to push up the references Doesn't seem to have done the job, does it? Uh, uh. Oh, God. Mm. Mm. going to make a mess of things isn't it Get aliases in there. Ah. Oh, I hate my life sometimes. Right. Um. No, that's just wrong in every conceivable way. I need to move that code first. Why is 398 showing up in the log?
we're still building 562. Why? Surely it should go back to that 9F commit. Let's try this then. Uh, check out blah 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 blah. Remace onto master. Okay, now then. Oh, for crying out loud. So, so the topic is based on the branch blah, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, no, we want topic to be for branch. Uh, for example, a feature based developed in topic depends on some faction and is found in next. Well, that's not true. We want topic forked from branch master, for example, because the function is a stable management. Yes, it uh, looked like this. Onto master, use the following command rebase onto master next topic. Hmm. Uh, Okay, so we want to rebase onto master and it's issue is it five six two issue three nine eight. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, <laughs> help me, thanks for that. Right, so now. Three nine eight off that good. Okay, that's three nine off the base. Uh, now five six two. 
and 563 so get to check out Five six three. Uh, okay, so we've got the same problem with that, haven't we? So we want to rebase five six three. Okay, now we do a git push. Uh, because the tip of the current branch is behind its remote counterpart. Uh, right, let's see if that's fixed the problem. So five six three. They should all be separate now. So that's five six two, that's correct. Five six three. Yeah, bastard. At least that one's right. Do you want dinner? Right, okay. Right, well we've done the polls. Let's go and do it.